Ete ti, ete ta. Tina koto kua mene mane ina topito o te fenua. Piki mai ki te fare wananga o waitaha i raro i te kurawai ata fai o nai tua huriri. No mai toti mai ki te kopapa o tene hui. Ko wai o. I fano mai o te taha o United States. I raro i te maru o te monga o Appalachia. Ke te noho o te ki o te tahi naine. Ko misti sato toku enwa. Ko tumawaki e te kura whakanunu kaiako. Tina rakoto, tina rakoto, tina rakoto katoa. Welcome to Tohere, the University of Canterbury Connect Lecture Series. We're so happy to see you all here tonight. So happy that the weather cleared up enough that you didn't feel like you were taking your life in your hands to get here. <laughs> and we're very happy that you registered in advance to attend the lecture series. And if you would like to continue to get announcements about future lecture series, just sign up with the folks who are here tonight um, so that you get those forward notices for future Connect lecture series here at UC. Um, just a couple of housekeeping tips for tonight. Uh, the Faripaku are on either side of the lecture hall if you need. Um, if there is a fire alarm, please just follow the directions of our University of Canterbury staff and they will get us to safety. If in the unfortunate event there's an earthquake, just take cover and hold for your own safety and then follow the directions of the university staff and they'll lead you to the um, appropriate gathering location. And please do try to stay together as a group um, for an event like this. The um, co-papa for tonight will be to have a 45 minute talk by our esteemed presenter, followed by some opportunity for you to ask questions. So we'll have the presentation first and then some, some korero um, following. It's now my distinct privilege to introduce tonight's lecture. Fakamanahia na tamariki, empowering our tamariki through language, culture, and identity. Presented by University of Canterbury senior lecturer, Kaylee Jones. Kaylee is a University of Canterbury graduate three times over. She has a Bachelor of Teaching and Learning, a Bachelor of Arts, and a Master of Education, all with first class honors. And soon, she will celebrate her doctorate in education. And that will be under the supervisory guidance of Professor Letitia Fickle, who's in the audience tonight and Associate Professor Sonia McFarlane. She also holds a Bachelor of Maori Performing Arts from Te Whare Wananga o Awanui Rangi. And I learned by reading her CV that she's won Kapahaka Awards. I didn't know that. <laughs> Kaylee is a teacher at heart. Kaylee taught primary school at Hornby Primary and Tuahiwi Primary, where she also served as deputy principal and she serves currently on the Board of Trustees for Te Pa O Raikai Hato, Hatu, Hotu, Raikai Hotu, where her children attend. She's won three University of Canterbury Teaching Awards, and she was awarded the prestigious National Ako Aotearoa Award for Sustained Excellence in Tertiary Teaching in the Ko Papa Māori category in 2020. Kaylee is also truly a dynamic and passionate scholar, which likely drew her to her tertiary teaching career. She first joined UC in 2010 as a senior tutor in Altahi, teaching Te Reo Māori. She later joined Arfano in the School of Teacher Education in 2015 as a lecturer. Her passion to share Te Reo Māori and ensure that all Tamariki have access to strong models of Te Reo Māori is unrelenting. Importantly, Kaylee is a visionary, and we will hear this in her talk tonight. Three years ago, she came to me with a plan for how UC 
could systematically attend to the issue of having too few teachers who speak to Reo Maori. She has since led the development of Omiri Ponamu. I want to acknowledge there are some Omiri Ponamu students here. This is a graduate diploma in Maori language and pedagogies, a two-year program that allows practicing teachers to upskill in tikanga and te reo Maori. And she has been leading the Ako Bachelor of Teaching and Learning Mataranga Maori degree, a three-year program that will be taught bilingually. This program begins in 2023 with Kay Lee and her close colleague, Jody Hohaya, who is here, Jody Hohaya, um, leading it into its existence next year. But Kaylee will humbly point out to, all, to everyone that the, all, there are several team members and partners in development in this work um, who've been part of this Kopapa, and but she's truly been in the back of the waka, pushing us along and giving us the guidance that we need to navigate the choppy waters of academic program development. She would also credit her beautiful Fano for supporting her on her academic journey and her leadership journey. So welcome to Mum Carol Cowles, to partner Arna Fiso, to Tamariki Haiwaki, Haiwaki and Sina, who will be part of the presentation tonight. They've left um, Grandpa Wee and Little Wee at home tonight, so we don't want to forget about them. So Tina Koto family, Fano, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Katoa. And thank you for sharing your beautiful daughter, partner, and mom with us tonight. I give you Kaylee Jones. Tina Rawatu Kwe Mistina Mahi Mayohana Mahi Noito. Uh, mihi mai kia, kia māwa i tēnei pō, nā mihi nui. Um, tātou, we'll start with karakia. Nā reira, e tū, koutou mō te karakia. Pau hihiri, pau rārama, pau o te whakāro, pau o te tangata, pau o te aroha, te pau e here nei i a tātou. Māori ora ki a tātou, haumi e, hui e, tāe ki e. Tēnā rā tātou. E noho whānau. Ko wai apu te awa, ngāti porau te iwi. Ko wai apu te awa, ngā te porau te iwi. Taku mana hua, ko te tai rāwhiti. Taku mana hua, ko te tai rāwhiti. Uh, Katu tene uri o te tai rāwhiti, hikurangi maunga, maunga haumi maunga, e mihi atu nei ki a koutou ki a toi tenei pō. Uh, tuatahi rā, he mihi ki o tātou nei mate, nā mate o te wiki, o te marama, o te tau. Koutou kua whiturangitea, haere, haere, haere atu rā. Ka rere oku whakāro ki ngā mārei kura, o te takiwa nei, a rā ko Dame Aroha Rediti Crofts, a rā ko Waya Karen Morgan hoki, ko wehe ki te pō, moi moi rā. Hoki oku whakāro, ki te matau o Māui, ki oku mātua ki eke, ki Uncle Willie Swan, ki Uncle Des Moines Swan, uh, ki Uncle Laurie Swan, me tōku matua keke o um, Uncle John Woods. Moi mai rā o ki o ki ai. Te hunga mate ki te hunga mate, te hunga ora ki te hunga ora. Uh, tuku mihi atu ki te mana whenua o te takiwa nei, a rā ko ngai tua huriri, maukatere maunga, raka huri aua. 
mahu nui te tuarua te whare, nei rā te ofa, nei rā te reo omihi ki a koutou katoa. Te hau kāinga o tēnei whenua. Maunga hau me tū mai rā, harauta, hoia rā i runga i te wai ora o te mimi o pāua. He uri tēnei nō te tai rāwhiti, nō te aitanga mahake. Ko te whānau a taupara, te whānau a kai, o ku i hapu. Ko taki pū, me taki timu o ku marae. Ki te taha o tōku pāpa, ko Francis Paranehe Jones, tōku koro, ko Julia Reid, tōku kuia, ko Ray Tūhoi, rāua ko Emma Piawane, o ku mātua tēpuna, ko a whāngai tōku pāpa. Ki te taha o tōku māma, ko Herbert Cowles, rāua ko Norma Shirley, o ku mātua tēpuna, nō te tehi o maru. Ko Wee Jones tōku matua, ko Carol Cowles tōku whaia, nō Tūranga Nui a Kiwa tōku pāpa, nō te tehi o maru tōku māma. E hono rāua ki te waipaunamu, ka puta ko au, ko Gate Kayleigh Jones tōku ingoa. Ko Jonathan Jones tōku tūnāne, ko Anga Ese Fiso tōku tāne, taku tāne, Nō hāmoa, tōna whānau, nō te hapu o loto whanga. Ko Wi, rāua ko Hawaiki, a māua tama. Ko Sina Rose, tā māua tamahini. Kei aku nui, kei aku rahi, rauranga tira mā. Kua karapinipini mai nei te nei pō. Nei rā te mihi atu ki a koutou katoa. Kia ora. Kia ora, talofa, mā loi ele lei. Kia ora nā, welcome, warm, warm greetings to you whānau on this cold night, but not as wet as yesterday. He hōnore tēnei, it's an honour and privilege to kōrero with you tonight and the fact that you've taken some time out to come along and to listen and join in this wānanga nō kūte whiwhi, what a privilege. The kōrero... I'm going to share tonight, Fano is entitled Whakamana Hia Ngā Tamariki, Empowering Ngā Tamariki Through Language, Culture and Identity. Uh, therefore, it's only tika, right, to begin with the voice of one of our Tamariki. Um, it's my privilege to soon introduce you to Sina Rose, Jones Fiso. Uh, Sina will share a kōrero about the generations of reo in her Fano. Uh, it's a shortened version of her manu kōrero speech. Our manu kōrero, for those that don't know, are te reo Māori speeches undertaken at high school level, but um, in a lot of kaupapa Māori settings, they do them from that age, from five. Uh, so her kōrero speaks of the generations of te reo Māori in her whānau, our whānau. Before Sina Rose begins, uh, let's give her, us, some encouragement by using some ki waha Māori. One we can use is karawhiua. Kōrero mai, karawhiua. Karawhiua. Another is kia tō ngaki ngaki. Koto, kia tō ngaki ngaki. So karawhiua, go hard, give it heaps. Kia tō ngaki ngaki, go handi. Um, and for those that don't know, that's, that's our big boy wee. He's at home a little bit ma wee wee. He doesn't look like that now. He looks like this now. Um, and from that picture, you also can't tell that he's actually the very last in the race, but he's still got a big mini mini on his face. <laughs> uh, and the last one, Fano, to fitia te hoko, koto. To fitia. Mai rangatia te angi tu. Kapai, and that's what Sina and I are doing tonight, Fano, in front of you all. Um, feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And that's what our babies, our kids, our kayako do every day. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, so I'm going to hand over to my Sina Rose, who will share a part of her kōrero in te reo Māori from her manu kōrero. Um, and she will stand here. So, kāpai. 
チクワチェワイルワキャレレキガチャイマチャヘアラヒイアチャチャイマヒメチャチャチャイファイイガチカガイアラチャイマキャマイキャイチャキャコレアイエガロキャプリプリキャパカマワキャチェイナチェイナハミエフイエタイキエコアガイシフィシオトクパパコケリジョンストクママコウィラワコホワイキヨクチガニコロイストククリコシーナロイザハコトクカイパパコナファカチプラガオテレアマオリキトクファンカチマタエキトククライワコウィハレジョンストナインワカオレトクカラワエコレロアナイテレアマオリアナイテレアマオリエフィチュテカイマトルオナパケケイナエネヘイチノアイホトナリオマオリエモヒオアナトククラワイタナワクラカオレオナカヤコエファカコイテリアマオリカオレラトエタイトコアナイガアフタガマオリケロトイテアンコマガコテファカトオオクマトチプナガマトオトククラワカオレラワエコレロマオリキトククラワキテカイガコテファカロマツワキテハイマルイヤカファイアツイガアオパケハヘパクコールヘパクテレオトクママイタナチプラガナチメアヘパクコレロマオリホキテレオトクテカイガテイテレアガオトクママカホリヘクラマオリキヨトイタヒネイヤコイテレオマオリキテクラツワルワカファカファカリイタナレオマオリイタチヘワパキキヘチノワイマリアハイヘレオマオリキトクファーネナチメアナトクママテフワラヒイパライポイポイノクテフィフィヌイヤケタクレオマオリキテレオオトクママイトナタイオリテキアハイケテファカーコトクママイアハイヘチノワイマリアハイキテハイレキテタヒクラリアオイファカマヨハアハイカクライナキテパオラカヘツアカコレロアハイキオクチガニイテリアマリノレラカファカカビアハイイテネコレロカワイホテネファカタキトークリオトークオホホトークリオトークマプリヒマウリアトークリオトークファカカイマリヒノレラテナカテテナカテテナラタテカトワ Every day, our tamariki, our mokopuna, do amazing things. Our tamariki are brave, courageous, talented, and feel the fear and do it anyway. My kōrero tonight shares pūrāko. Stories, in the same way Sina Rose just shared a, a story. Pūrāko have the ability to share knowledges through the generations, explaining the ways of the world, the ways of our tūpuna, our ancestors, and messages about our past. Sheena, Sina shared the story of her grandfather's generation, down to hers. She explained that my grandparents, like many other Māori families, And that generation made a conscious choice to speak English in the home and raise their tamariki as English speaking,、uh, English speaking tamariki. For my father, Wee Jones, his parents' aspirations were for him and his siblings to survive and thrive in a Pākehā dominated society. There are many similar stories. If you listen to our Komatua generation, some stories sadly. Include physical punishments for speaking to Reo Māori in school. This wasn't the case for my dad.、Uh, Sina talked about her mum, me, not knowing a whole heap of Reo Māori、uh, growing up and learning through some schooling experiences and later on as an adult. And lastly, Sina talked about her pa wānanga, te pa o rākau hotu, where her and her brothers、um, attend every day. 
She spoke about the fact that she can speak to te reo, speak te reo Māori to her brothers there. Uh, I won't translate all of Sina's kōrero, yet the themes Sina has offered tonight form the foundation of my kōrero. Tēnā koe, Sina. Uh, the structure of my kōrero is framed in Juri's Te Whare Tapa Whā. Te Whare Tapa Whā is a well-known holistic model uh, about health and well-being. The four walls, when standing strong, make us feel strong and well-balanced in terms of our hauora. This is ne necessary for us to think about when considering how we empower our tamariki. These four walls, as well as te whenua, which relates to the significance of our tūranga waiwai, the place we call home, the place we plant our feet, our whakapapa, our ancestry, place-based knowledges and identity are all important and should be prioritised within our education system. Whakawhanaungatanga, manaakitanga, establishing connections and relationships within a safe and welcoming space is important. This feeling or wairua of warmth and care to give things a go. Tu fitia te hopo, mai rangatia te angitu. Okay, we're going to do this now. So we're going to share a bit of that bravery um, and you're going to turn to somebody a little bit close that you don't know necessarily and share in te whenua. Te whenua is the foundation. It's all about who you are, where you're from. Um, so it could be a row behind you. You're going to start with a greeting. So it could be kia ora. So have a go whanau, kia ora. Kia ora. Or it could be, because you're just greeting one person, te nā koe, kōrero mai te nā koe. Ka pai, and we're making sure we're not saying te nā koe. I mean, kwe, te nā koe. We're saying te nā koe. We're on a quest to meet someone new. Um, and the little thing I've put there, Fano, is about where you're from. Nō hia koe implies where are you from. It could be a where are you from as in a place, or it could be an iwi. Ka pai, so you might share where you're from, a iwi. Um, so we're going to do that now, Fano. but just before we do, just in case we get so into the connection building and whakawhanaungatanga that you're flying off into a 10 minute long kōrero, um, we're going to have a practice at this first. So when I say tihei, you're going to say mauri ora and share in that breath of life. Kapai, so we'll practice that first. I'll say tihei and you'll take a big breath through your ihu and we'll share it in a breath together. Tihei, mauri ora. Perfect, kapai. So we got that. So Fano, this is back to you. You're going to say kia ora, te nā koe, nō, so that you're the, the side, the italic side, wherever you're from a hoe, and that could be Christchurch, it could be wherever, and you're not Kaylee Jones, you're Carol Cowles, or Angie Sipis, <laughs> or whoever you are, um, and have a go, have a go. You're replacing my bits with your bits. Kara fio koutou. Kia ora. Kia ora. Okay, Fano Tihei Mo Ano Tihei Tokyo Koto Mahi. Um, Kapai, so you've built up some confidence, you've built up some whakafanonga tanga, kwa hiki, the wairua, the wairua in the room is feeling a bit more not so scary and not so scary for me. Um, you're going to try it again this time. Different person, hopefully. Um, same thing but you're going to add a little addition, and the addition is at the bottom. Why are you here tonight? And I know many of you, it's because Kaylee asked you to be here. Um, <laughs> but there might be other reasons, so have a go with that. One more time, Fano. Someone new. I'm the Oh, you're moving now. Then I'll 
I know you're right in the midst of conversation there, Fano. Uh, but that's what it's all about. When we've set that foundation, when we know who each other are, when we've built that whaka for knowing a tanga, it just feels better. The wairua in the room it automatically lifts, people are smiling, um, and I'm feeling like I can actually talk to you. And I didn't even engage in that whaka for knowing a tanga, but just looking at you, looking at your faces, um, seeing Ange meet Mum, how cool. Kapai. Um, so before we move on, just showing you the same slide as you've seen a couple of times. Nohia kwe ko wai kwe. One that we don't often maybe um, talk about as much in education, or when we do mihi fakato or mihi mihi, um, is no wai kwe. No wai kwe. From whom do you arrive? Derive. And arrive, I guess it's the same thing. You arrive here. Um, which talks about your ancestry. Kapai talks about your mum, your dad, your queer, your koro. Um, and that's really big into our Māori. So how well for us as educators, how well for us as kayako do we know our nannies? Do we know our tawa, our power, our koro? How well do we know the iwi or village or maunga our tamariki come from? You know, more than data on a computer, more than a mihi that's on a wall, how well do we lock that information in and make that part of an important aspect in our classrooms or our centres um, to whakamana, to empower our kids through their language, identity and culture. Um, kapai. So I'm going to move now. I've interwoven the first part, te whenua from Drury's Te Whare Tapawha, and now we're moving to Te Whānau. Uh, te Mano o Te Whānau. Te Mano o Te Whānau ensures we look at the whole child in order to uplift their wairua, their spirit. For some tamariki and whānau, their ancestral links and their geographical links will be unknown. They'll be unknown to them. There'll be disconnection. It's our job as educators to honour our babies and work alongside them and their whānau in a humble way, demonstrating utmost humility and āta respect to learn more about our tamariki. Tanya Pōhatu explains the term āta as growing respectful relationships. Um, some people I know are not so keen on an acronym, acronym um, but I quite like acronyms and the old acrostic poem. Uh, so when thinking about Te mana o te whānau, the mana of the whānau, engaging with whānau, co-designing with whānau, and whānau well-being, these are some kupu. Whakapapa, ancestry, humārie, be gentle, unassuming, respectful when entering conversations with whānau, āta, that same sense of humility, respect, and humble nature, ngāko, Open your heart, open your mind to the culture of the child. Ahure. Remember, every whānau and whānau makeup is unique. Ahure is unique. Honour this and don't make assumptions, but do make connections. Uara. Values. Understand that whānau values and beliefs are important. Me hoki whakamuri kia ānga whakamua. In order to understand our educational context today, we must understand our past. We must look back to the future. My father grew up in Ngātapa outside of Gisborne, near the pre presence of his ancestral maunga, Hikurangi. 
He was born in 1949 to Julia Reed and Francis Paranahi Jones and was a whāngai pēpi to Rei Tuhui and Emma Pewini. The backdrop to his upbringing was the return of his fathers and his uncles from World War II, some not returning. My father moved to the South Island when he was only 16 years old, leaving his East Coast roots, still a youth himself. My dad, Wee Jones, was the first Māori firefighter in Christchurch and spent decades serving the people. This was a very significant feat at a time when racism was rife and Māori were the underclass in many facets of society. In 2011, Rua Moko shook here in Ōtautahi. Dad's first stop in the fire engine prior to heading into town to see the, to the CTV building and PGC building was to put, quickly pull into our home to check in on us. I remember huddling under a table as the ground was shaking, seeing Dad peer through the window to make sure we were okay first. His first thought was our whānau. I may not have had te reo Māori flowing in my home as a child, but mā pono principles and uara values... I'm going to look this way, OK? <laughs> Mum, my mum's sitting. Um, based around the importance of whānau were strong. Being Māori is not about the amount of reo you know. It is about your whānau. It is about your whakapapa. My mother grew up in Te Maru, her father was a businessman. He owned a fizzy drink company. Um, her mother was from a small town called Riverton. My mother is the youngest of four siblings. My mother, Carol, recalls her cousin having quite a lot darker skin. She also recalls her auntie and others feasting on the delicacy, titi, mutton birds. There was always talk of my grandmother, my mother's mum, having Maori ancestry, but it was concealed. The distinct looks of my mother's cousin and the fact that Titi could only be sourced by Māori families with links to the Marambird Islands were strong hints of their whakapapa Māori. My mother has, a whaka, uh, has whakapapa Māori to a tipuna fire named Sarah Timu, who married Jackie Lee near Stuart Island. And I definitely will look this way. Um, my mum is Manaki Tanga personified. He tanga to marae ia. My mum can't make... My mum can make some amazing fry bread and a mean boiler. She is a committed mama and dedicated nanny to her mukapuna. Aroha ki te tangata is something I've learnt from my mum. Again, being Māori is about whakapapa. Mum and dad and others, including my aunties, were my first teachers. From these people, I have learnt integral mātāpono principles that help guide my interactions and ways of being today. To understand the context of my grandparents not speaking te reo Māori in the home and my mother's side not acknowledging their taha Māori, I will share some important points. In 1867, the Native Schools Act was passed. This enforced that all teaching would be in the English language and Native Māori schools focus on manual instruction rather than academic subjects. In 1913, the number of Māori speakers remained high more than 90% of Māori school children were native speakers, yet their native tongue could not be spoken at school. In 1915, the Department of Education employed an assimilation policy. The annual report to the time included a statement from the inspector of native schools who wished to, those who, Māori who wished to enter the learned, oh, I'll start that again, sorry. It read, there is no encouragement given to Māori who wish to enter the learned professions. The aim is to turn their attention to the branches of industry for which Māori seem best suited. In 1920, Ta Apira Ngata started lecturing Māori families and communities about promoting Māori language. The language was in decline, as was knowledge of our cultural practices. Ta Apira Ngata was the first Māori graduate here at Te Whariwanango Waitaha. In that same year, 1920, my dad's father, Rei Tuhui, was born, a native speaker of Te Reo Māori. Two years later, my nanny, Julia Reed, my dad's biological mum, also a native Te Reo Māori speaker, was born. Um, it's her coat I wear today. So both sides of dad's whānau were native Te Reo Māori speakers, but they both made a conscious choice to bring up 
uh, my dad and his siblings using English as the dominant language. <coughs> We've now worked through Te Whenua and Te Whanau from Te Whare Tapawha. To empower our kids, you need to know them. To know them, you need to know from who they derive. Okay, so my most important role, the one I hold dearest to my heart, is my role as a mother. And my dude's doing his thing, making his paper airplane. Um, I'm also an educator and student. I'm close to finishing a doctorate in education, exploring the unique pūrāko of kaiako, teaching in kaupapa Māori settings. One kōrero that was shared by a kaiako participant reads, Māori kids in the mainstream, there's not a lot in there for them. It's that whole whānau thing. They feel happy in who they are and where they are from. You can embody te taha whānau in the context of education through one, knowing the whānau of the tamariki you teach inside and out, beyond just merely mum and dad or guardians, but nannies, koro, taua, poa, aunties, uncles, whānau in its widest context. And two, and very importantly, te, whā, te whānau, te taha whānau, is the culture you create in your centre or kura or classroom. Within kaupapa Māori settings, the sense of connectedness often can be related to that of siblings or cousins. In fact, the terms used in kaupapa Māori settings are fire, hākui, kōka. They all mean mum or auntie, which alludes to the close-knit connection. Te tīnana is a further dimension of Juri's Te Whare Tapawha. This wall of the whare pertains to physical well-being. In the context of this kōrero, I relate this side of the whare to he kanohi kitea, a seen face or physical presence. The teachers that inspired me I still know today. It was not the content they taught me so much as the way they made me feel, holistically, that had an influence. They were there. A kanohi, a tinana. They were there in person. They knew my whānau and they made me feel special. One example is one of my te reo Māori teachers at high school. She knew my dad was a firefighter. She would check in on my whānau regularly. I remember her asking more than once if dad was able to bring the fire engine round the back of the whare nui to use the ladder to get the piers at the top of the, uh, the pier tree. <laughs> This is a cute anecdote and may not necessarily seem connected to the kaupapa, but it shows that one, my kaiako knew my dad, two, she knew his mahi, and three, she took the time to ask about my whānau regularly. This is a stark contrast to some secondary school, school experiences that have our taiohi, our youth, shipped off from class to class without real engagement in kaiako even knowing whānau. Further to this, the concept of kanohi kitea, the known face, pertains to the effort and service kaiako put in outside of centre or school hours, including cultural obligations. They have an innate responsibility to the people, to serve from the heart and are kaupapa driven. The kaiako that inspired me took time to kōrero and catch up and offer a big api. This is till, till this day when I see them out and about. The kaiako that inspired me are well-known faces within our communities. Some are stalwarts of kapahaka, others are te reo Māori exponents, some iwi leaders, leaders and all demonstrated utmost manaki and aroha ki te tangata, respect and love for the people. Returning to my important role as a mother, my tamariki attend te pā ora kai hotu, a pā wānanga, not a school, as you walk through the pa, you will see pictures of each of the punanga, the students, on the wall in traditional dress. You will see their mana and the pride of their tūpuna exuding from the photographs. One of the kaiako that taught me as a child was my daughter's first teacher at Te Paora Kai Hotu. One of my secondary school te reo Māori teachers is the current kaiurangi principal at Te Paora Kai Hotu. I remember their passion for kaupapa Māori that inspired me their physical presence and wairua when I was a tamaiti and rangatahi. This was something I remembered and treasured and I wanted for my own tamariki. Um, kapai. 
I did time, although sometimes things take longer, so I've got five minutes, so I'm just sussing in my head which are the important parts. Um, Kapai, I'll carry on with the slide, Whanau. And reflecting upon my master's research that looked at beneficial outcomes of kaupapa for Māori spaces, including bilingual education, being immersed in te reo Māori me ona tikanga, the indigenous language and culture of our whenua, had a range of wonderful consequences for our tamariki, linguistically, cognitively, socially, and culturally. One integral outcome that came from the interviews was that this learning is good for everyone and supports becoming a better, more culturally aware and accepting citizen of Aotearoa. This relates strongly to Bishop Berryman's message that what is good for Māori is good for everyone. But what is good for everyone is not necessarily good for Māori. Kapai. I'm just, I'm just, come on. I'll do it, because he's not here. So. Um, I'm just going to skip down a bit to this, this dude. This is my boy, Wee. Uh, Wee is named after my dad. My boy knows it's a special name. He has gone through times when he's been unsure whether other tamariki, his peers, will mock him. I've been quite protective about trying to put him in spaces where his name will be pronounced correctly and given mana. Even now, my dad will say to, just tell them Kiwi. Everyone knows how to say Kiwi, and it's just the we at the end. If you go to the North Island to the East Coast, we is a quite well-known name, but down here in the South, it's not very well-known. I remember one year, my boy was doing some research about Te Tiriti o Waitangi with his kayako. This pūrāko sticks out to me because it was a time when he was empowered, empowered by his kayako through his name, we. I remember we coming home. He said, did you know there's a tipuna of ours from Te Aitanga Mahaki? His name was we Mahuika, and he signed the Treaty of Waitangi. Now, I won't go into land confiscation, cultural denigration, and assimilation post signing of the treaty, but what I will say is, if his kayako, Wee's kayako, didn't know we, or his iwi, didn't pronounce his name and didn't pronounce his name pronounce his name incorrectly, or didn't know his whakapapa, if she did not sit alongside him to research together, my boy would have not been empowered through his language, culture, and identity through his name. Luckily, his kayako did. Um, I'm going to skip forward, Fano. And this is potentially the last part I'll share. It's um, a bit of a poem I wrote that intertwines the notions, uh, notion of language, culture, and identity to empower our kids. Um, it's called Society Puts Us in Boxes. Society puts us in boxes, boxes that tell us who we are, what we can and should be. Boxes that tell us we are not enough. You are not Māori enough. Eyes glance towards a kaumātua as he should be able to lead the whai kōrero at his age, yet his language was beaten out of his people. You're not Samoan enough. She sits quiet, unable to speak her mother tongue. Her parents came to this land for greater opportunities, cultural disconnection, language loss. You're not Pākehā enough. Stared at by a shop owner as he browses the shelves. Hoodie up, wallet in his pocket. Suspicion. Security moves in. Too brown to have money. He exits, embarrassed, head down. You're not bālangi enough. Judgment, low expectations. The teacher places her in the bottom stream maths class. One test, sat alone, without her aina. She's in the cabbage maths class now, without her, with her mates. Society puts us in solitary boxes, boxes that we don't fit, boxes that confine us, boxes designed to silence us. They shame us and make us feel small. Stop. Boxes are made of cardboard and are easily broken. Free from the box we stand, together, united, ainga, whānau, collective strength, collective voice, standing tall in our own mana, in the light of our tupuna, 
ready to fulfill aspirations and shatter stereotypes. Our voices will not be silenced. We will waiata, we will speak, we will siva. I am enough, I know my mana and that of my ancestors. Pride, family, culture, language, identity. Society puts us in boxes. We will not box ourselves. We will break society's preconceptions and misconceptions. We will not take these on as our truth. We, us, Ainga Bano. We are enough. We are our ancestors. Their blood runs through us. We are enough and more. Kapai. So we'll leave it there. Thank you for sharing those puraco with us tonight uh, and the Tafari Tapafa as an image that we can all carry to our own homes with us tonight um, and to carry this forward in our hearts. Uh, you, we get to hear more from Kaylee now um, through your questions. So it's not over yet. Um, <sighs> the things that she had to leave out there as she was racing to the end can be further unpacked if you have questions that you would like to share. And we'll race our microphone to you. Okay, sorry, I cannot hand you the microphone, but we will repeat your question so that we capture it on the recording for tonight. Are there any questions? Yes. Kia ora. Kia ora. I was trying to think of every question anybody could, and that was one I thought I'd be asked. Um, Let's repeat the question okay. for the recording. Kapai. So the question is, what do I think about compulsory te reo Māori in schools? Um, so my research isn't so much about kura kaupapa Māori. It's actually about, um, I've called them puna reo, but they are partial immersion settings. So set, Kura Kaupapa Māori work at 81 to 100% te reo Māori, so pretty much a full day um, of te reo Māori teaching in every curriculum area. I'm looking at what's often called bilingual settings, which is 51 plus or 31 plus. Um, so pretty much two main things that come out of that kōrero are those settings are beautiful in terms of empowering our kids through all those things, language, culture and identity every day. Um, through not having to leave any aspect of them at, at the gate. But another really strong kōrero, because the kayako um, are all kayako, the kayako participants that I'm listening to and sharing their pūrāko, is that it's a massive mahi. It's a massive role, and it's almost a dual role. You're taking on um, being a kayako plus. It's almost double the workload when you're working in a kaupapa Māori space of teaching and learning. And right now, even though I love te reo Māori me ona tikanga, um, every type, even if you Google it right now, you'll see there's a critical shortage of te reo Māori teachers. Hence all these programs that we are trying to establish to um, build quality, because that's the thing, our babies deserve everything, eh? Um, they are our, our taonga, and we want them to be empowered through all that, those things that make them them. But right now, we don't have the teachers to do that. So. If we build up the teachers, I'm good. Yeah. If, if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. Kia ora. 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 Kia I think, I think each have challenges, and, um, and probably listening to our um, kayako in Reo Rua, there are different challenges to our kayako in Kura Aunoa or Kura Auraki. Uh, some similarities in terms of isolation, as in, um, in our bilingual kura, it's often a one classroom, 
Oh, sorry, kia ora, thank you. So that question for our whānau that are watching, um, and I'm going to look at Afi in case I get it wrong, um, was around the pressures on our whānau, our kaiako that are in main street, or English medium settings. And those that are in English med medium settings, I think, have some of the same pressures, but I think they have different challenges as well. Um, one challenge that probably resonates is the isolation. Bilingual units are often their own island within a wider English medium, um, still often called mainstream. Uh, for those kaiako working um, often in secondary spaces, teaching te reo Māori, it's often them and themselves, and I, know, I, can, I can speak from my experience. Um, that was my first experience of teaching. I was at a high school teaching te reo Māori, and I used to hang out with the PE teachers. You know, there was just me. Um, by myself, and you have to learn everything by yourself, and you have a no, not really a go-to person. Um, and there's lots of layers that are tricky, culturally being unsafe, not a go-to um, kaitautoko person, so I think there's many, many challenges, but maybe every context is different. And even within those contexts, every context is different. But mihi kātika ki ngā kaiako Māori katoa. Man, they do an awesome job. You do an awesome job. Just, yeah. Thank you, amazing. Any further questions? I keep saying hand moves when it's just this. I know. I know. Okay. Um, I think if there's any final comments that you want to make or any closing um, pieces, we have mm. a minute for that if you want, Kaylee. I'll just have a quick scoot. Um, I guess the, there, there was a little bit I was going to talk about in terms of we being empowered through his name, but there's um, many, many tamariki, Māori, Pacifica, many, many tamariki, uh, and their names are often shortened or changed or mispronounced. And just um, the mana that uh, name holds is massive. And, um, and we don't often know the pūrāko or the story behind those names until we delve a little bit further. And that's all that stuff through a name is language, culture, and identity. Um, and I just talked a little bit in here, or wrote a little bit about um, a boy named Mana and this is going so many years back now, so it's probably okay to talk about. He probably doesn't even remember me. But um, we used to have another teacher, um, and this wee dude, Mana, was awesome. Uh, loads of stuff going on for him and his whānau. Um, but what a cool kid. And a kayako continually, as much as we tried to totoko him to call him Mana, um, like money, quick, and short and snappy, called him mana, mana, and it really grated him, probably grated everyone around him. Um, but he already had a lot of stuff going on, and one day he just kind of lost it, flipped the tepu, um, and had enough, because mana wasn't being given mana, you know, the mana he deserves. And it might just say, seem like a little story, a little pūrāko, but Jeep is the name mana, you know, out of all names. Um, so, you know, it's all those things. It's about shortening a name to make it easier on yourself. It's about um, the mispronunciation, but it's also about where we put the stress on our kupu Māori, or ingoa Māori. Kapai. So that's names, but we would love, um, if there was anything to take away from tonight, is um, whakamana, empower our babies through their, through, it, through their names, through their identity, through who they are, and get to know that story. Kapai. Kia ora. Thank you for that closing idea, Kaylee. Let's, uh, let's give Kaylee the, the mana that she deserves tonight for this beautiful talk with some pakipa. <laughs> standing ovation. Oh. <laughs> How play. Um, we did have a little bit of a... Oh, sorry. That looks, oh, no. Oh, I thought you... My bad, I thought that was a quarter door. Um, this was at the end, and anyone can share. It's not a, um, 
it's a little snippet of a waiata like at the beginning, but it um, takes me back to Taki Timu Marae, one of my cousins, Maxine Jones and Uncle John Pormana. It was just a waiata that always made you feel good about being who you are. Um, if you know it, join in and then we'll finish. We'll stand for Karakia Whakamutanga. Um, because you're magic, magic people to me. You're magic people to me. With your head held high, let your voices cry. Be proud to be Māori. Back to South. Because you're magic, young people to me. You're magic people to me. With your head held high, let your voices cry. Be proud to be Māori. Kafai, tu mai mo te karakia whakamutunga. Um, mihi nui, rawa tu ki a koutou. Thank you so much for making time to come out. And kapai, I work here, so you'll see me round, or you can <laughs> email me partai if you've got any questions. Um, nā reira, mihi ana ki a koutou, kā tui i tēnei pō. Me karakia tātou. Unu hia, unu hia, unu hia ki te uru tapu nui. Kia wātia, kia māma, te ngākau, te tinana, te wairua, i te ara takata. Koia rā e rongo, whaka iria ake ki runga, kia tina, tina, hui e tai. Ka whai, pō mana hau whānau, pō mari. Please drive safely, and if you'd like to sign up for those future lectures, please see one of our staff here in the front. Kia ora. Thank you so much, Mr.